Hello, baby yams or baby jams or jays. If you are a fan of me, the jammy hay, let me know what you prefer to be called in the comments. I will start addressing you squidlets accordingly. Yammy jammies? Yeah, that just sounds like pajamas at this point. Today we are going to talk about something extremely important but overlooked as much as riding gear, theft prevention. So if you're itemizing your list of bike expenses, theft prevention is one of them that usually comes close to last. Ah, oh, crap, Uncle Jam, not another expense. Well, kids, it's true. One more expense. It's never ending. I tried to warn you, but all you kept saying is we want more lists. We want more content. So we are delivering. All right, cars come with anti-theft and normally can't be carried off by two bodybuilders and thrown into a cargo van, unless it's a smart car or a Fiat. But seriously, motorcycles don't come with anti-theft devices, so that department is handled entirely by the owner, not the manufacturer or the dealer. What else do you want from a street legal race bike? Now, in talking about motorcycle theft, are you thinking of stealing a bike? Don't. We actually have three bikes I'm giving away in the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series. We're live now, so you can click the link below or go to yamminoob.co. That's .co, not .com. And sign up to start. Once you register and pick out a package to subscribe to, you'll automatically start getting entries. Did you forget the bikes? I am giving away a Kawasaki Ninja 400, a Suzuki DRZ 400, and a Honda CB650R. Stupendous. If you don't want to subscribe, no problem. Just don't forget to check out our sweet new merch for chances to win these bikes. YammyNoobMerch.com. That one is a .com. For all of you cute baby yams out there that want to rock Papa's new designs. Remember, every dollar you spend is an entry to win. Nothing says you love your girlfriend like a Yammy Noob hat or t-shirt or even a hoodie. Hey, it's getting cold, so you need to buy another hoodie so she can permanently borrow it. Now, here are five steps to prevent motorcycle theft. Number one, location, location, location. The best place to store a bike is inside. Seriously, if you can bring your bike into the bedroom every night, you'll know when someone's trying to steal it. If you can't bring it into your bedroom or the fire code doesn't allow it, the next best place is the garage, preferably one that's attached. No garage? Well, that's why we have anti-theft devices. The first step and the most important to preventing the theft of your motorcycle is to live in a good area. I don't mean just stay away from the other side of the tracks. Pick an area with more than just low crime, but plenty of visibility, off-street parking, something to tether the bike down to, maybe even a parking spot to block your bike in with your car, and so on. If you live in an apartment building and can see your bike outside the window, you'll probably be sleeping a lot easier than if you couldn't. I'm not saying that bikes are only stolen in the ghetto. It happens in more expensive neighborhoods too. A lot of times that one time someone doesn't lock their car in the nice neighborhood is when it's getting jacked. The same for motorcycles. If you live in the typical American suburbs and you simply leave your bike out in front of your garage all night, it could be gone in the morning. But then again, if you have a garage, use it. I understand that life happens to you and maybe you're going through a divorce, have to give up your garage, now you're moving into an apartment without a garage. What do you do? Adapt and overcome, my squidlets. Select a good location. Seeing other motorcycles parked outside, yeah, that's a good indication that motorcycle theft isn't an ongoing problem. See if the apartment has a garage, or if possible, see if you can roll it into a storage shed or on a back porch. Another issue to worry about with location is the weather. An area that has trees to slow down the wind and the rain will be better than a wide open lot for your bike to just sit in. Look at the potential for flooding in your new area. The only thing worse than your bike dropping from the wind is that it drops into a puddle and gets flood damaged. Ugh. That good Samaritan picking up a fallen bike is actually trying to steal it. Thieves will find any excuse to get close to a bike and take advantage of any opportunity they have. Gone are the days of moving in to wherever you feel like. You have a motorcycle, so if you intend on keeping it safe, there are a lot of variables to consider. Wow, it's a lot like being married or having a child. Number two, cover is camouflage. Nothing says steal my $40,000 Ducati like having a bike cover that says Ducati or Panigale. Seriously, also, if you can buy a $40,000 bike, why don't you have a garage? Anyways. 
My point is that if you buy a cover with your bike's logo, brand, model, or anything else on it, you are literally inviting thieves to come and take your stuff. Sure, you can have other anti-theft devices and a plan in place, but if the invitation wasn't so open, well, maybe the thieves wouldn't come in the first place. It's easier for a thief to choose an uncovered bike than to stop and peek under the cover. Sometimes a cover makes it difficult to even peek under and see the bike with all the tethers, traps, and tie-downs. This makes it that much more advantageous than being uncovered. Uncle Jam recommends a plain bike cover. Get a decent one with tie-downs, elastic front and rear, even protective linings for your exhaust. You don't want to melt your cover after a ride. That has never happened to me, seriously. I suggest that you find something somewhat specific for the size of the bike, but it doesn't have to be exact. Measure your bike if necessary and use that as a starting point. A bike cover is like a fitted sheet that's two sizes too big. It's going to be a little snug, but not really. Maybe enough to wrap around your tires. When you effectively cover your bike, it will deter thieves for sure and protect it from the elements. Remember, a bike exposed to the weather needs more maintenance sooner than a garage kept one. Number three, passive anti-theft devices. These devices are not electronic and are the biggest deterrence for thieves. Passive devices are locks for the brake rotor, chains used to run the frame, or anchor points for chains in permanent parking spots. Their intention is to slow down or discourage a thief from trying to steal your bike. If a thief is planning on riding your bike away from the scene of the crime, yes, it's likely, the more deterrence present, the better. Nothing is easier than to bust through the ignition cylinder on a bike and simply ride off. When you add something like a chain wrapped around the frame or a lock through the brake rotor, these devices require tools and time to be removed successfully. Even adding two minutes of frustration to a heist is enough to have the thief abort his attempts and move on. Rotor locks are effective because they physically make the bike impossible to ride. They basically force a thief to pick up a motorcycle and haul it off without being able to rotate the wheel. The lock attaches itself through your brake rotor and clamps on just like the brake caliper. The wheel can roll back and forth, but if you move it too far, it'll begin to cause serious damage to your bike. Chains simply wrap around the bike's frame, advisable, or through the spokes of the wheels, inadvisable, and keep the bike tethered to a solid object. Trees, poles, other well-anchored objects make really good things to tether a bike to. If you have nowhere to tether your bike, consider an anchor. This device is bolted into concrete and provides a protected metal ring to attach locks or chains to. The Kryptonite Stronghold Anchor, once installed, that's a permanent addition to any parking spot. Passive anti-theft is a good way to start protecting your bike beyond a cover. Number four, active anti-theft devices. Just like cars, motorcycles have alarm systems which can be installed and used to prevent or deter theft. The alarms for motorcycles can be either devices hidden on the bike or padlocks with sirens. Some alarms have motion sensitivity, so if someone sits on your bike or tries to roll it or even looks under your cover, the alarm will go off. Although a great idea for motorcycles, alarms are just the same as cars. If you're in the shower practicing your latest Celine Dion song, you won't hear the alarm going off. There's also the chance that your neighbors will hear it but won't notify you or the police. We've all heard a car alarm go off in the middle of the night before and run the battery down because no one's bothered to shut it off. Mm. Alarms are a good addition to other anti-theft devices. Since they can be bypassed or destroyed easily to a trained thief, they should be a nuisance in addition to other anti-theft devices. It's best to get multiple alarms that have dual purposes. Some locks have alarms and they can be used to lock your chain to anchor. That's literally killing three birds with one stone or lock, I should say, maybe not literally. Some of the available alarms are the Dowco Guardian. Intended for use with a Dowco cover, this alarm can also be used on, well, other covers as well. Once disturbed, the alarm rings out a 130 dB attack on the thief's earballs. It might be the alarm with the most element of surprise. The Xena XX14 Disc Lock. Not only does this thing lock onto your brake rotor, it also has motion sensors and a 100 dB alarm if disturbed. For a more simple lock, try the Oxford Boss Padlock Alarm. It's a padlock that can be used through the rotor, on a chain, or lock a chain to an anchor. 
Number five, GPS tracking. If you really think that your bike's in danger of being stolen, buy a GPS tracker. These are small devices that are either battery powered or connect to your bike's battery. They're hidden somewhere on the motorcycle, be it under a fairing, in the tail end, or under a seat. These devices will alert you through a mobile app when your bike is on the move without you. It is the perfect tool to begin the recovery of a stolen motorcycle. Now, thieves are smart and will probably know to check or look for trackers, so try to be as discreet as possible when installing one, and also try to be as fast as possible in tracking the signal if your bike gets stolen. Once a thief sees a tracker, they're simply going to destroy it. Hopefully you found out your location of your bike before the signal gets terminated. GPS units do have their pros and cons. One of the best benefits is that it's the easiest way to find your bike if everything works properly. Some of the cons are that it needs access to a signal. So if you live in a city and your bike is stolen and stored underground, the unit won't be able to catch the signal and transmit your bike's location. GPS units also have a subscription with a monthly cost. Not only do you have to purchase the unit, you also have to keep a monthly maintenance fee for the unit to signal the bike's location. This isn't something you wanna pay late or forget about because under Murphy's Law, the second your device stops tracking your bike is the exact moment when someone steals it and gets away with it. Well, there you have it. Five ways to tell a thief to find another bike to steal. Do you have any other ways of preventing your bike from being stolen? I would love to hear about it in the comments. And remember, hit the link below or go to yamminoob.co, yes, .co, to get signed up to win some of our fabulous giveaway motorcycles. I will see you guys in the next one. Fact, Mike was a headless chicken in Colorado that lived for 18 months after it was beheaded in 1945. Goodbye.